Here we are, making the front cover for a picture book. Hello Space Cats, it's me Jules. I have been really enjoying doing these fairy tales and folklore stories. I'm particularly still in love with that Dick Whittington one that somehow magically came out of my hands. This week I am making a front cover illustration for the folklore story The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse. This is one of Aesop's fables and has many different manifestations. The thing that I find interesting about this story, particularly considering our global financial situation at the moment, is the lesson that can be derived from it. I'll delve into that as the illustration unfolds. If you haven't already done so already, I would so appreciate it if you would take half a millisecond to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to know when a new video hits the YouTube multiverse, then make sure you ding that little bell next to it. And if you would like me to send you a free and almost certainly invisible cup of tea and custard cream through the ether, you can share this video with your friends, your family, and your cat. Meow. Enough waffle, let's do this. The first job is to do the layout. So I had a thought about where I wanted the countryside bit, which is this area, to be. And I wanted to focus on this because the story is, um, although it's about the two mice, I think the country mouse comes off better and so I wanted the country bit to be in the foreground and then the the town to be in the background over here and then before I put the mice in or any of these details of the, the countryside or even the buildings up here I thought about where the text was going to go so if you imagine this is the top of the front cover that needs to be quite prominent so that you can tell what what the book is and also it gives you um, an idea of the genre of the book and of course down the bottom you need your author name once I'd done those few rough placings I then thought about what my mice were going to look like so I did these two little characters sort of running towards each other because they are allegedly co cousins in the story they're yeah, pleased to see each other and um, they're running towards one another. And then it was just a question of thinking about doing some research and thinking about different plants that you would see in a field. So I've got some wheat and a poppy and a foxglove and um, some cow parsley and cowslips and then some grasses across the bottom here. And, uh, and then just to draw some rough building shapes in up here. Next up I need to go and transfer this onto some watercolour paper. Before I tell you the story, I just want to tell you a little bit about the colouring process. I'm putting down some plain water onto the watercolour paper. This is called wet in wet technique. I'm going over the lettering because I'm going to use a darker colour for the text. You'll see me mostly use the wet in wet technique, that's wet paint on wet paper throughout the process just using a little wet in dry to get some of the details. There once was a mouse that lived in the countryside. Susie had a little hole under an oak tree with a cup made from an acorn husk and liked to eat whatever was ready to harvest in her field. In spring it was new hawthorn leaves. In summer it was oat and wheat ears. Autumn was blackberries and in winter, well, winter was hard because her field was under the snow, but she was a wise mouse and she stored food to eat through the other seasons so she wouldn't go hungry in winter. Then there was her cousin Derek. He lived under the floorboard of a very posh house in an expensive part of the nearby city. Every night he would come out of his cosy, heated home and nibble at the white breadcrumbs and get into the fruit bowl. He liked the dragon fruit, the kiwis and the lychees. He felt he was living his best life. Wow. 
Well, Susie hadn't seen her lovely cousin for ages, so she invited him to come and stay with her. But Derek wasn't massively impressed. He scoffed at her home. Very quaint, he commented. But Susie could tell he really didn't like sleeping on a grass mattress with just a leaf blanket. What's for breakfast? asked Derek. Susie gave him her last blueberry and half a hazelnut. But Derek made a face and muttered something about rabbit food. He was a bit rude about it. I know what you'd like, said Derek. Come back to the city with me and I'll show you the high life. You can stay for as long as you like. So Susie packed her little handkerchief bag and they set off for the city. By the time they arrived, it was evening. Derek's home was very different to Susie's country abode. He had managed to find bits of cushion stuffing for his bedding and a matchbox to house his knickknacks in. There was no food store. He had provisions all year round on tap and it was the sort of fare that would leave you feeling full and sleepy. Susie was quite impressed. She had never been to a place where you didn't have to worry about where your next meal was coming from and where you could sleep in a deep, soft, warm bed. Come on, I'll show you around, said Derek. They left the hole in the skirting board and were immediately in a luxurious dining room. There were candlesticks on the table, a glass chandelier hanging from the ceiling and a lace tablecloth hanging over the sides of the table, an easy way to climb up. The lazy humans hadn't cleared up properly. There were bread rolls and a dish of butter on the table. And beside that, there was half a bowl of trifle. Derek showed Susie how to lower herself in, holding on with her back feet to the rim of the bowl and lick at the custard, cream and sponge fingers. It was at this point that Susie heard a mewing. Meow! It was a black and white cat. Derek's head shot up, his eyes wider than a china side plate. Time to go! He squeaked over his shoulder as he shot back across the table, down the lacy cloth and back into his hole before Susie could say cheddar cheese. Back in Derek's home, Susie's heart was beating like the wings of a hummingbird. Always have to watch out for Catzilla, said Derek. He killed my brother! Susie was horrified and still panic-stricken, she decided to head home the very next morning. Scurrying down into her little burrow under the oak tree, she felt a great wave of relief flood her. She might have simple food and basic furnishings, but she felt safe. And that, to her, was more important. The lesson in this story is it's better to live frugally but in relative safety than opulently but always looking over your shoulder and always worrying. Of course, in reality, there is plenty of things in the countryside that will eat a mouse. Sparrowhawks, ferrets and of course trolls when they aren't bothering billy goats. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book 
and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! What a good lesson to remember. I would much rather be living on wheat and nuts and in the countryside than on caviar in a concrete jungle. I know some people might find living in the countryside a bit boring because living in the city you can go to gigs and the theatre and always find lots of things to do. But I've lived in London and other cities around the world and frankly I would rather be living up a tree with a squirrel. And having lots to do can be a bit overrated, especially if you're hoping to be creative. I'm going to be making a video on how to find your creative spark by not doing very much at all soon. Next week I am looking at the art supplies that I use, why I use them and how much I love them. Until then I am off to find a wheat field to run through, stock up on hazelnuts and make pumpkin pie for my mousy friends. I will see you next week. Nanu nanu.